Okay, so I've been gone a bit. And in my in my return, apparently the most crazy possible shit has gone down in the world. Cuz the links I have this week are just all I we always get bad shit, but the the week this week is just like what in, the, in fact, our very first headline tonight. Oh God! All right. Well, first off, let let's get our our, our intro going. Because I think I honestly think we have a a contender for the craziest fucking headline ever, and it, it even in context, it does not make any fucking sense. Here we go. Each week. Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And Tara, can you guess crazy. where our first story takes place? I'm crazy for Florida? So I'm one, one try. You got it in one try. You didn't even have to think, you didn't have to scratch your head over it. It was one try. Okay. It's like I'm psychic or something. I have fifth sense. I get that reference. Thank goodness that you do. That's how we're able to have conversations. No, don't go away. Where are you going? So I sent I sent you the uh I'm moving too much and she's getting annoyed. There we go. I just sent you the the link. Prepare yourself, because even reading this out loud, I'm not going to make any goddamn sense here. Sexual revelation by spiritual girlfriend blamed for rampage. I wasn't even in Florida this weekend. A Sebastian man told deputies he trashed his girlfriend's car because he, quote, snapped when his spiritual, quote, unquote, spiritual girlfriend told him his dead grandmother would appear in his dreams and commit <laughs> unusual sex acts involving him and an adult toy. The damage that Casey Moulter, 28, is accused of causing to his girlfriend's 1997 Nissan Altima appeared to be the culmination of issues between the two. Uh, Morrison said his girlfriend oh, told him oh, his... That's so nice. Morrison told him his dead grandmother was going to appear in his dreams and commit an unusual sex act involving him and an erotic er, adult erotic device. As opposed to a child erotic device? Are there any other kind of erotic devices? Uh, Moulter stated he could not get the image out of his head and he snapped. That, said, that, it, that he said, is what he took actions, including letting the air out of her tires and throwing the creams and lotions. What else did he do here? Uh, and he used condom. Yeah. Defla yes, yeah, broke the passenger side mirror, deflated tires, a used prophylactic, and love notes on the hood and the windshield. Wait. I don't mixed think anything message. in that I don't think anything in that Carrie Underwood song mentions a used What? what? Dug my key into the side of his car. Scratched my name in his leather seats. <laughs> yeah, no, didn't didn't throw the used con. Also, the mix love notes and the used condom, plus smashing shit up and 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 deflating her tires. And the question is, this is the important question. One was the condom used by him. I guess there's there's a few questions. Two. If it was used by him, when did he fill it? Like, did he jerk off into a condom ahead of time and save it? Or did he bring one with him and jerk off there? And if, either way, which one is crazier? <laughs> there is another option, however. That he fucked some other chick and saved it? No, no, that one of his friends just gave him one. This is what happens when you start asking questions! If you have the kind of friend... <laughs> you can be like, dude... 
I need a used condo. And they'll be like, okay, you need new friends. You need new friends. <laughs> if you have the kind of friends that ask you for your used condos, you need new friends. What was what was the train of logic going on here? Is this supposed to stop his grandmother from sodomizing him with a dildo in his sleep? Because yeah, no, in his dreams, right in his sleep. No, when you dream. no, no. In your sleep means you're asleep. that. That's the the when you wake oh, up. Well, and, right. That's you. That's when you wake up and your friends well, my point and shade is, like, side of your half your face and. Was this the counter ritual? Like, is he now protected? From <laughs> grandmother, dream. We've right? discovered Florida voodoo. This is how this is Florida voodoo. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but they're positive it works. Namio is is sharing condoms a thing boys do. Man, <laughs> no. You'd like you'd like to think no. Oh, because they're not really reusable. They're. They're a one-time use item. Our next one, actually, this is this this one. I don't know whether it infuriates me or blows my mind more. This one comes from an actual government organization. Keep that in mind. This is their idea. This is what they want to do. This is a legit. Remember, we learned that the government was saving like the missile launch codes on fucking microfiche or something. Floppy di- giant floppy disks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Try to be. This is from the UK. Um, anti-terror plan to spy on toddlers is quote heavy-handed. Nursery staff and childminders are given duty to report. <laughs> Fuck it. Did you just laugh at duty? I. It's a toddler story. Really? Are given duty to report toddlers they suspect of becoming at risk to be terrorists under new Home Office measures. Nursery school staff and, and registered child minders must report toddlers at risk of becoming terrorists under counterterrorism uh, terrorism measures proposed by the government. Directive is contained in a 39-page consultation document issued by the Home Office in a bid to in its in its bid to bolster its prevent anti-terrorism plan. Um, senior managers and governors should make sure that staff have trained, gives them knowledge and confidence. To identify children at risk of being drawn into terrorism and challenge extremist ideas, which can be then used legitimate terrorism and are shared by terrorist groups. They should know how to refer children and young people for further help. Okay. What are the warning signs here? For a, thir- a three-year-old wants to be a terrorist. What, what, are, what are the red flags you're looking for? They can't even tell you which ones are the red flags. They're three! They don't know colors yet! We're talking about people that can't form a complete sentence yet, let alone write a manifesto. (laughs) They can't write the manifesto. They're too busy eating the crayons. I I seriously want to know what you're looking for in toddlers. Uh, Let's see. Um, Let me see. I'm trying to find out what's in here. Uh... Oh, listen to this. Quote, it is appropriate that children are taught fundamental British values in an age-appropriate way. For children in early years, this will learn about this will be about learning right from wrong and in practitioners challenging negative attitudes and stereotypes. Uh, other examples of children at risk of radicalization include instances where a Muslim child might tell a teacher that he had been taught at a re- religious school or a madrasa that all non-Muslims, quote, are wicked. Okay. Are they going to be drilling these kids? What did you learn at the Muslim school? I like flour! <laughs> Billy punched me! I have to go back for him! How many toddlers do you think are going to get shaken down because they turned down tea? <laughs> Proper British values, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't like tea! Put him on the list. <laughs> Put Black him back on. that little fucker immediately. Get that on the list. On the list right now. He asked for juice. He's fucking calming. Can they even pronounce the word wicked? They certainly can't pronounce the word terrorist. Terrorists. 
<laughs> Mommy teacher said I'm a terrorist. My nephew's nine and half of his R's are still... No, it's his L's that are W's, real, real, weirdly. But this, <laughs> this is some scary shit, though, because what, what, what is their ide idea of what a terrorist constitutes? Does it mean someone who opposes the government's behavior? Does that mark them as being radicalized? Dude, but does a three-year-old even know what the fuck Toddlers the government... don't understand half of most no. of what the government does. Toddlers understand nap time. And cookies. Yep. And bunnies are soft. Yep. And whatever is on Disney at that time time of the day is yeah they they don't give a shit about you know they're not really concerned about the intricacies of parliament uh... so i mean just the idea that we're trying to turn kindergarten teachers into narcs for their students because being a kindergarten teacher just just wasn't hard enough. Yeah, now you have to be on. Now you have to be unaware. Is Timmy just playing with the Legos, or is he practicing building a bomb? Like now you have to. Now you not only have to fucking worry about, you know, which kids aren't potty trained yet, and which kids are going to eat paste, and which kid just has a habit of taking off all their clothes and running around. You have to worry about which kid might blow up the school. <laughs> Jed's, Jed the Jedi. Who is your daddy and is he a terrorist? <laughs> you know, career day could be a good way to start with that. Yeah. Let's have career day. This is my daddy. He believes that the West is the great devil. <laughs> Oh boy! All right, and is this a Florida one? This is a Florida one. God, we got a lot of Florida stories this week. Um, I I was hesitant to use this story, in so much as an animal gets hurt. Oh no! However, it's just so fucking weird. Oh, who pointed that out? Someone pointed out that this this program would make a really great sequel to Kindergarten Cop. It would. I, I, I would watch it. I would watch it. This one comes to us from uh, South Florida. The headline alone. Reptile shop owner hit employees with bearded dragon lizard. South Florida reptile store owner is facing battery and animal cruelty charges after authorities say he struck his employees with a bearded dragon lizard and put it in his mouth. Benjamin Herman Siegel, owner of Siegel Reptiles, was arrested Friday at the business on uh, West Hillsboro Boulevard, according to a Broward Sheriff's Office re arrest report. Siegel 40 remained behind bars. According to the report, video surveillance captured Siegel throwing the animal in the air and swinging it in the air multiple times. He also hit employees with the bearded dragon multiple times and threw Gatorade on them. Then say if it was on the lizard or the employees. Um, why would you... Well, lizard. I, I know it's what... The, you know what? It's a reptile. It, it, it's, it's got the lizard brain. It does not understand empathy and warmth and loyalty and all that shit. I don't care. What, what are you doing? This poor animal. Right, like, I understand that they're not cuddly and stuff, but poor lizard. Yeah, what are they doing to this poor fucking animal? And why? And put it in his mouth! Like, just beat your employees with soap and a sock like everybody else. <laughs> Is that what happens? That what, what you've been through in retail? Soap in a sock? You've been beaten up? Retail's tough business, man. You don't even know. You're. This is a guy who owns a shop that sells reptiles, supposed to be at least versed in how they work, and he's put it in his mouth. Who the fuck looks at a bearded dragon lizard and go, "Yep, that goes here"? No, I. 
I don't know if this is true of all reptiles. I used to have a friend in college who had a pet snake that it was an actual snake. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> it was a little mini constrictor and he'd bring it into the art department for the day and just hand her off to me and I'd hang out with the snake all day and she'd wrap herself around my neck and tangle up in my hair and all kinds of cool stuff. But they're generally but, pretty chill. Yeah. But he always used to remind me just as soon as you're done handling or wash your hands because their skin gives off traces of salmonella. And he's putting it in the, the, his mouth. So, like, don't lick them. No! I don't know if that's true of all our pals. It might be just snakes. It might be just this breed of snakes. So I'm not saying, but... I just... It... The other, the other thing here is that what, you know what, if you believe in reincarnation, whoever that lizard used to be was an asshole. Or a martyr. <laughs> or this guy's coming back as a bearded dragon lizard, for sure. Why would just, well, that goes here. And beating people with it. <laughs> hey, what? Hey, what? Hey, did you just hit me with a lizard? Yeah, what you gonna do about it? Be Lizards really confused. What? Lizards are not tools. <laughs> they are not weapons. <laughs> they are not snacks. I guess some places they are, but they have to be killed and properly cooked. <laughs> Lizards are not weapons. They are certainly not floss. <laughs> That's the worst army ever. Go into battle with a bunch of fucking, you know, Komodo dragons and boa constrictors and like what the fuck are we supposed to do i don't know lizards are not weapons i don't know i kind of feel like an army of komodo dragons would be kind of badass well yeah but not armed with one you, they're not very wieldy what is this motion what is that you doing to the lizard exactly trying to aim it no you did like the shotgun cock motion <laughs> <laughs> how do you load a lizard I, I just wonder what exactly you're doing to the lizard in that scenario. Are you jerking off the lizard so he'll be happy as he rides into battle? Well, that, that would be the other direction, would it? Because you can't point it at somebody. That'd be the other way. You made the hand motion. I'm just asking questions. I wonder if you could make the lizard just train the lizard to go, you know? You're the one that's pantomiming and pleasuring a lizard. <sighs> All right. Our next, our next one this week. This is not deja vu. I swear to God, this is not the same story again. That's the first thing I saw when I read this headline. I thought, we already did this story. <laughs> we did not. This this is Die Hard 2 shit. How did the same shit happen to, well, a different guy twice? But how could the same shit happen? This, I swear to God, this is a brand new story. People on the show are going, wait a minute, I've read that one before. No, this happened again. I can hear the cat, but I can't see her. It's from California. California woman gets stuck naked in chimney. That's... Do you remember the uh, we had a story a while back about a woman who tried right. to climb down her ex-boyfriend's chimney? Well, this it's... one up the ante by doing it naked. And I swear to... Who wrote this story? This oh, is, dear. Yeah, who the fuck wrote this... Oh, CBS News, AP Wire. No one wants to take credit for it. But I have to do the voice. Things went from ho-ho-ho to no-no-no for a California woman who tried to climb down the chimney of her estranged boyfriend's home. CBS New uh, Los Angeles reports that homeowner Tony Hernandez said the woman, who is the mother of his three children, had tried to open the door of his home around 5 a.m. Saturday when she found it locked. Instead of doing what the rest of us would do, she climbed to the roof and tried to get in through the chimney, which is where she got wedged inside the 12 by 12 inch structure. Apparently, she had removed her clothes to aid her descent. What would the rest of us do? Call a locksmith. Call the boyfriend. Call the police. Okay. What? Just making sure. 
My first option is if I if I'm locked out of somewhere and I can't get in, it's call somebody. Not strip and try to go climb down a little stone hole. That could potentially have fire in it. <laughs> Chet's nuts well, roasting like no on an open fire. fire. If what? the fire was going, you'd know that pretty quickly before you jumped in the hole. Does this person sound like they're making the the, the most sound? And, and I gotta put the picture on the big screen. Cause look at that. Look, you could see her blackened knees sticking out of that hole they had to smash in. Hernandez said he awoke for her cries to help and tried to get her out with an extension cord. <laughs> what? I'm picturing uh, him lowering it down. Yeah, I probably. Firefighters were called to help free the woman after a two hour opera, operation uh, that required breaking open the fireplace, uh, taking the hospital with minor to moderate injuries and probably major embarrassment. Who wrote this fucking story? Now, apparently, she's his ex, and she decided this made sense. Like, I've had some bad breakups. I've never even for a second considered. You know what I should do? What? I should sneak in that fucker's house through the chimney. Naked. Naked. Perfect plan. It's never occurred to me. Why not break a window? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? The, be, okay, here are your options. Either you smash a window or you're going to climb down the chimney in the all together. Or at least go see. Maybe a window's open somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Just the, the fucking. <sighs> I can see why she's his ex. Kind of. Imagine if this was her logic in everyday situations. <laughs> well, I can go to the store to buy milk. Or I could go and capture a cow. It's the same kind of logic going on there. And here's the other thing, because I have to go there because that's why you have me here. Uh-huh. She's all covered in ash and soot. There are places I don't think I'd want ash and soot. Yeah. I understand. I get. I mean, I guess I understand taking off the outer layers of clothing to better fit down the chimney. Maybe leave the panties on. Yeah. Because, goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same problem I had when I tried. I, I tried a few times to watch True Blood because everybody I know really likes it. I tried on three occasions. And on each of those three occasions, the scene into which I was thrown was so ridiculous that I just could not go on and the first time it was like Sookie is walking around a graveyard and she stumbles onto a fresh grave and whatever his name is with the hair lip crawls out of the grave naked and immediately starts fucking her and I'm like that's disgusting oh did you stumble on the uh the like, you're dirty and probably covered in all manner of bugs yeah that's not going in my vagina until you take a fucking shower. That's disgusting. Like, I know you've been dead for 200 years and you don't have to worry about yeast infections. The least of you. which there, yeah. Right. Like, but fuck you. Did you catch the one where uh, the uh, the white trash wear cougars tied down Sookie's brother and pulled a rape train on him? No. The next time I tried to wash, same guy with the hair lip was fucking some other chick and apparently it was like they were like hate fucking or whatever because he took her head and twisted her head all the way around. <laughs> that was that was nail polish. Twisted her head all the way around and just kept going. And I was like, well okay. Must see TV. And you know what? It's funny that you talked about things going there. Because you gave us our segue. I don't know how I do that every time. You did. Um, now, I will say, I will, I'm going to give it to KOAT at Albuquerque. They kept this the most politely worded article. It takes a minute to get to the oh God part. 
And this falls into our Yes, It Happened the Fuck Again. Woman charged with bringing gun into the MDC, which is the, uh, the, 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 detention, the Metropolitan Detention Center. Why? She brought a gun with her? Was facing charges after authorities say she brought a gun into the detention center and dumped it into a trash can. Officials say she smuggled the gun in the booking area and tried to throw it out in one of the bathrooms. According to a criminal complaint, ladies prepare to cross your legs. McAllister told investigators the gun was in her waistband, but the, the uh, Bernadillo County deputy who interviewed her said he doubts that and believes the gun was likely in her private area. Wow, that was... They... Tiptoe, tiptoe. We can only be so thorough, and that area is out of the question. We cannot search a body cavity. I really, 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 really need women to stop using their vagina as a purse. Or a holster! This is like the third gun vagina we've had. <laughs> And you know which way it's pointed. Because it doesn't fit the other way. I'm not even going to speculate. If you try to put it in handle in first... You're if you're going to go through ram the trouble of ramming a gun up your fucking vagina, it had better be pointing out so you can actually use it. But the, well, if they try to put it in that way, well... That's going to take a little foreplay, I think. I mean, some women are talented. <laughs> but if you're gonna if you're gonna ram a gun in your vagina, for God's sakes, don't point it towards your uterus and all your other internal organs. You need those for living. Gungina three, the vagining. Thank you, DA Scott. That it just that's Why do people keep doing this? It's not storage. It's not. It's not a pocket, it's not a purse, it certainly isn't a holster. The only thing that anything in that neighborhood... Oh, apparently it's number six. Six? Somebody went through our... Chaos Nooks went through our archives and he says this is number six. This is the sixth time? There's like... There's like... A vagina NRA that we don't even know about. This... No, no, no. This is a warning label. Okay, if this happens six times... They need to start putting warning labels on guns. Warning! Do not place in vagina! No. They're a militia. These are the fucking Amazon women from the moon or some shit. <laughs> and this is their militia. They're the... Like... I, maybe there's some kind of anti-rape militia. I don't know. But <laughs> like, they will just shoot it off. But... This is too many to be coincidences now. I, I honestly believe this is some kind of conspiracy. This is the vagina RA. You'll get my gun when you take it from my cold, dead vagina. And when they say Obama's coming for your gun, <laughs> they need something very... That's not what they mean. <laughs> oh... This, why would you, uh... So what could top that this week? Well, you know, again, this is from my whole bit of, of, of thinking. There are drugs. Why do people do them? That can't possibly be fun. Maybe it's like a really fucked up version of a strap-on. <sighs> do you think there are guys that are into being pegged with guns? Probably. There's guys who are into everything. Now I feel like I need to Google that porn. Don't. So anyway, I, I remember, sorry, as you were. I quite often say I don't understand why people do certain drugs because the outcomes don't seem like fun to me. Isn't that the whole? That's why they call them recreational drug. use. That's why I call it recreational drug use. It's that's supposed what recreational means. It's supposed to be fun, right? And again, this is so for vaginas, but who knew? <sighs> Again, this is Florida. Holy shit. <sighs> Prepare your, your R. Kelly jokes now. 
couple high on drugs trapped inside unlocked closet for days. I saw this. This is special. Couple who are high on drugs spent two day two days two days believing they were trapped inside a janitor's closet, only to discover when the cops arrived that the closet had been open the whole time. Amber Campbell, 25, and John Arwood, 31, called police after breaking into the Marine Environmental Science Center at Daytona State College. They told police they were trapped inside the, co the, the closet. Oh, brace yourselves. This gets nasty. When police arrived, a foul smell led them to the pair. They found human excrement and paraphernalia from smoking meth and crack cocaine inside the closet. When an officer checked the closet door, he realized it had been open the whole time. How long do you think it took before they started smoking their own excrement because they ran out of crack? <laughs> Team Scott again. R. Kelly's crapped in the closet. <laughs> Cracked in the closet is part one. Crapped in the closet closet is part two. Uh, why? Why? It's also number two. And I love the look of her mugshot. She's just like, well, what are you gonna do? That shit happens sometimes. This is, is this is fun. This is not a fun. These are not fun drugs. I mean, seemed like it had to have seemed fun at the time. If you are doing a drug that makes you forget how to use a door so thoroughly that you would poop in the same place you're staying because you cannot get out, that's not a fun drug. How did they wind up in the closet? Like, did they... Were they playing like seven minutes in heaven with crack? <laughs> and meth. There was <laughs> meth as well, too. See, I never understand mixing the drugs because that just seems unsafe. I mean, not that doing crack is safe. <laughs> so. I feel like that's pretty unsafe. Mixing the drugs just seems extra unsafe. Like, why isn't one stupid deadly drug enough for you. And how do you wind up in the closet? <laughs> Two days. Two days and neither one of them tried the doorknob. What did they eat? Oh god, Tara. That's a valid question. It may be valid, but you don't have to ask it because we really don't want the answer. But I do. You really want How long that? Have I been doing this. You know this. I always want the answer. When nobody else wants the answer, I do. Just and I kind of want video. Of of what? Of two meth heads in a closet pooping on each other for two days. Of course. Do you want the? You know you'd watch it. No, I wouldn't. I'm the person who says, oh, God, this movie's horrible. You have to see it. And I go, no, it's horrible. Thank you, but no. I certainly don't want to watch people pooping on each other for two days. That is not one of my fetishes. <laughs> no, okay. Let's just clear this up. I do not, I do not have any manner of excrement fetish. What I do have is... An insatiable and morbid curiosity that pretty yeah. much never gets me in trouble. Oh, hi. Oh, God. There you are. The channel, a sash. Hi. Two meth heads, one closet. Funny. God, I cannot wait till the internet forgets that fucking video. The internet will never forget that video. They will never. We, we still make all your bases belong to us jokes. But, or I, I guess the first thing we've learned this week is... There are drugs that are, you know, can be used recreationally, but the definition of recreation is a little narrow for some of us. 
Stick to the fun drugs. If drugs are these supposed to be the fun drugs, I how are these the fun drugs? I don't know. What do the not fun ones do? No shit. Exactly. <laughs> we learned yet how again, you, sir. I this isn't even learned at this point. This is like you're taking the remedial class at this point. We learned yet again, a vagina is not a holster. No. It's not storage. Don't put things there. There are I'm certain put things... things there, but only for recreation. There and are things... things that belong there. Right. They're... They design things to go there. There are people in laboratories every day designing new and exciting things just for the express purpose of going in a vagina. Exactly. There are There's plenty of options. A whole industry of products made expressly for that purpose. Exactly. We've learned it's that somebody's job to just make things for you to put in your vagina. It is. Wow. That's somebody's job. There's got to be a like an ist, you know, like like a, a, an oncologist or an ophthalmologist. There's got to be some sort of ist. A dildoist? A dildoist or something like that. That describe. <laughs> I want that on a business card, man. Imagine bringing that guy home for Thanksgiving. So what do you do? I'm a dildoist. Do do? I'm a dildoist. <laughs> oh, it's a growth industry. We've learned that Occam's razor quite often applies in real life. In this way, the simplest option is usually the best one. Ergo, smash window, naked chimney climbing, go with the smash window. Yes, baby, I see you. I'm on the internet right now. We've learned that lizards are not tools, nor are they weapons. No. They are friends, not food. They don't go in your mouth. No. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I'm told some people eat lizards. I don't really get it. We learned that the hunt for terrorists can, in fact, begin a little too early. <laughs> like, is the kid who knocks over your sandcastle in the sandbox... Is that considered a future terrorist because he destroyed a structure? These are the questions we have to ask people. Constantly vigilant. And finally, we learned tonight that there are many ways in which one can procure a used condom. <laughs> And yet, no ways in which someone should reuse one. No. No. They reuse once and throw away. Like yes. Kids. Yes. And pretty much anything you're jamming in your orifices. Well, that's not true because we just did a whole thing on the things that go in your vagina industry, and those are reusable. Yeah. But, uh, an alarming majority of the things made to be jammed in your orifices are not made to be kept afterward. No. They're not souvenirs. I that... saw a picture a couple weeks ago. Somebody tied their used and filled condom around the handrail on the subway in New York City. Which means not only did you somehow surreptitiously fuck on the subway, which, I mean, good for you, I guess. Or not so good for your date, whatever. But you like, why would you do that? Maybe he was hoping someone would salute, disseminate themselves. Okay, someone in the channel just won. That's it. That's like the worst future romantic comedy ever. Let How me... did you meet? Well, I found this used condom on the subway. <laughs> I had a turkey baster. And then years later, my kid wanted to know who his daddy was, so he did a paternity test, and it was love. Lemon, Dude, we should write that movie. Lemon Song says, that's a dick move. We should write that movie. Strangers on a Train. Maybe he brought it from home. Why are you carrying your used condom? Who does that? What's that in your pocket, Jimmy? Oh, just, you know, a rubber bag of my own semen.
So how about them Mets?